Hi, my name is Jock Thacker. I'm a chief surgical resident. I'm joined here by my mentor and colleague, Dr. Frank Backwoods, who's a cardiothoracic surgeon at Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan. We're here to talk about abdominal complications after cardiac surgery today. Today, we were to discuss two case reports. The first of a 60-year-old female who developed evidence of GI bleeding, which we further discussed, and a second gentleman who was 70 years old, who had coronary bypass surgery and developed concern for mesenteric ischemia. Overall, abdominal complications have an incidence that approaches 1% after cardiac surgery. However, the mortality rate approaches 33%, demonstrating that these are devastating complications. They are often associated with renal failure, new dialysis dependency, multi-system organ failure, and deep sternal wound infections. Key in the management is first early identification, diagnosis, and then directed therapy at the underlying etiology. The most prevalent and decreasing incidents are C. diff colitis, acute hepatic failure or dysfunction, GI bleeding and ulceration, ileus, mesenteric ischemia, perforated viscous, cholecystitis, and pancreatitis. The overarching risk factors are those of low flow states or low cardiac output states, such as congestive heart failure, with New York Heart Association Class 3 4, COPD, balloon pumps, hemodialysis requirements, prolonged cross clamp and bypass times, low cardiac output states, prolonged inotropic and vasopressor requirements. First complication being GI bleeding, which was discussed in the first case previously. In the photo on the right, we depict a rectal ulcer, which was treated endoscopically in this patient. Uh, GI bleeding has an incidence of 33% of the GI complications, and this has been increased due to heparinization intraoperatively, antiplatelet agents after coronary surgery, as well as anticoagulants for treating postoperative atrial fibrillation and venous thromboembolism. The diagnosis is clinical with the prevalence of hematemesis blood per rectum, or hemodynamic instability. GI bleeding is divided into upper and lower, being upper proximal ligamentotrites, lower being distal to ligamentotrites. Upper GI bleeds are usually related to peptic ulcers, polyps, gastritis, and foregut tumors. Lower GI bleeds are more commonly due to diverticular disease, arteriovenous malformations, as well as various etiologies of colitis. <clears throat> the mortality for GI bleeding complications does approach 20%. Cholecystitis is another fairly common complication after cardiac surgery with an incidence of approximately 3.3% of the GI complications. It's often diagnosed a little bit later at approximately post-op day 13. The diagnosis is clinical with right upper quadrant pain, Murphy's sign, leukocytosis, potential for deranged alopecias, bilirubins and usually concordant sonographic findings, such as a thickened gallbladder wall, as demonstrated here, pericholocystic fluid or edema fluid around the gallbladder. And in this particular instance, there is a presence of cholithiasis or stone within the gallbladder. Cholecystitis is subdivided into calculus and acalculus, with <clears throat> acalculus being secondary to cholestasis and ischemia. However, calculus is usually secondary to the underlying cause of the calculus formation. The overall treatment is focused on antibiotic therapy and source control via either percutaneous drainage or cholecystectomy, depending on the patient's hemodynamics and ability to tolerate surgery. The risk factors are similar to those before and include circulatory arrest, lower body temperatures, massive transfusion, emergency surgery, inotropic support, and mechanical support, such as balloon pumps and venal arterial ECMO. Pneumoperitoneum is another commonly seen abdominal complication. And in our first photo here, we're able to see the pneumoperitoneum present over the liver's edge underneath the diaphragm surface. And in fact, you can also see it on the patient's left side. These account for up to 6% of the abdominal complications. And of note, diverticulitis is a rare cause, however, one to be considered as well. Perforations have generally decreased with the utility of proton pump inhibitor as well as antihistamine agents. 
and the overall diagnosis is made with a combination of physical examination as well as radiographic findings. Typically, the examination would be positive for extreme abdominal tenderness and acute abdomen. In our bottom photo depicted here, we note pneumatosis intestinalis, which can be a precursor to pneumoperitoneum, is usually secondary to inflammatory and infectious states. The overall mortality does approach 20%. Mesenteric ischemia has an incidence of approximately 12 to 13% after cardiac surgery with regard to abdominal complication. And there are four pathophysiologic mechanisms. One, and most commonly, is secondary to non-occlusive states or low-flow states, and is actually depicted here in the bottom right photo with patchy areas of ischemia and necrosis. <clears throat> the lesser likelihood states are those of arterial and venous thrombosis, and those that would be depicted in the top right photo with a complete take cutoff of the SMA, likely secondary to thromboembolic disease, as well as diminutive flow in the celiac artery seen immediately above. The risk factors are similar to other abdominal complications, and non-occlusive states has a slower onset and progression, and can be demonstrated by a string of sausages should the patient be able to tolerate a CT angiogram. Non-occlusive states are typically treated with antibiotics and correcting the hypoperfusion with potential for emergent laparotomy should the patient have signs of frank ischemia and necrosis. <clears throat> Occlusive states are typically presenting with more rapid onset and progression, and these are often treated surgically. Despite surgical therapy, mortality still does approach approximately 33%, making this a devastating complication. The two most prevalent complications are C. diff colitis as well as hepatic failure. C. diff colitis is the most common cause of hospital-acquired diarrhea and is typically associated with leukocytosis. It is associated with preoperative aspirin, statin, beta blocker, proton pump inhibitor use, longer ICU, and mechanical ventilation courses, however, but it is not associated with cardiopulmonary bypass and cross-clamp times. Antibiotic therapy is the mainstay of treatment in the form of oral vancomycin as first line. Vancomycin enema can be administered for states of ileus, <clears throat> and fidaxomycin is usually second-line agent. In rare cases, toxic megacolon may be present, and those patients can be salvaged with total abdominal colectomy. With regard to hepatic failure, this is usually secondary to ischemia and is demonstrated through the loss of synthetic as well as metabolic function. This can be demonstrated through coagulopathy, hyperbilirubinemia, decreased albumin production, and hepatic encephalopathy. The overall risk factors are similar to those as before and include balloon pumps, prolonged cross clamp and bypass times, massive transfusion, <clears throat> valve surgery being more prevalent than cabbage surgery, as well as states where right atrial pressures are elevated. These are our references. Thank you to the STS and to the Critical Care Committee for allowing us to present today. Please feel free to reach out to us with any questions or concerns. Thank you.